guys, welcome to another off-grid setup. This one in a Atlantic. These guys have made it all the way over from Mornington in Melbourne. Um, yeah, big, huge, 960 watts on the roof, guys. So we've got a lot of solar replenishment for these guys who want to basically do the lap um, and be off-grid, limited to water. And that's what this setup gives these guys. So I'm gonna give you the rundown real in real depth. So that way, hopefully it asks, answers a few questions that you guys might have. So we've got the PowerPool lithium batteries once again. Loving these again, 250 amp discharge per battery. So if one fails, this whole system can continue to run from one battery. Um, they're huge. So there's 560 ampere hours here of lithium battery storage. Premium lithiums use really high quality cells in these batteries. Thanks, Paul. And what we've got, we've got the Enerdrive 2600 inverter behind here. And that's running on all the factory um, CMS outlets. So that's all your GPOs next to your bed, your outside one, the one for the microwave up here, obviously the air conditioner, and what is not wired through the inverter, obviously in this case, is the hot water service, which is a swift hot water service. It's got about a thousand watt elements, so that's before the inverter, and the three-way fridge, because it is an automatic three-way fridge. Now, we've got a 50 amp Victron Smart Solar Controller taking care of about a 600 watt array on the roof, uh, running a high voltage string in zero shade, like you're in the open, really happy with that setup. And we've got the 30100 here, that's taking care of the customer's original two 180 watt panels and we've just rewired them. Now, they're in a lot of shade, they're right next to the air conditioner. We've brought them away from the AC a fair bit to allow for a better um, shade earlier in the morning and late in the arvo, but we've done the best we can. We'll see what he gets out of that. And what we've got here is the Red Arc 50 amp DC to DC charger, the charging from Old Mate's uh, tow rig. In this case, it's a 200 series Land Cruiser. And we've checked his Anderson system on that, and thankfully, whoever did it, they ran really thick cables, and we're very happy with that. So 6BS is on that run, we're very happy. Um, it was via an isolator, and it was sharing a line for the three-way fridge, but we've rectified that. It's on a direct line now, so we're gonna get really good replenishment from this DC charger while our mate's driving the solar at the same time, guys, all right? That's a big question that gets asked all the time. Does my solar and DC to DC charger work with your systems at the same time? The answer is yes. I mean, why wouldn't you? It'd be silly not to. You know, 900 odd watts on the roof, you know, 50 amps coming from the car, yeah, it's a no-brainer for me. Use both to charge the lithium and run the air conditioner at the same time and charge, so why not? Um, and we've got everything all neatly tucked away here. So this had the chassis mounted batteries outside. So, you know, 70 odd kilos of monstrous AGM batteries kind of chassis mounted down here in front of the um, wheel arch here. Now, they're no longer there, so we saved that weight. This. The weight here that we've fitted replaces that directly. It's, it's pretty much on par. The additional weight now is the three solar panels that we've had on the roof, um, which is about 25 kilos. So this, this gentleman with this setup is 25 kilos above what he started with. That's pretty good for, you know, 560 amp hours, nearly a thousand watts of solar on a roof. It's a, it's a monster setup and this is how to do it. So it's so simple to use this. It's, it's an overlay system. It has no effect on your factory 12 volt system. It is completely adaptive, adaptable to any van, any motorhome, any RV, any setup you guys wish. It is so simple and effective to just open a door, press a button and everything's on. Microwave turns on, turn your air conditioner on if you want, you know, make your coffee, get your induction cooker out. The list goes on, you know, air fryer, whatever you want, you know, hair dryer, washing machine for this case on this one anything anywhere outside of the road free camping and you manage your power with a really good battery monitoring system which is what we've done for these guys now obviously i'm going to show you all videos after this guys of the rundown we'll, we'll plug the car in we'll get the charge rates coming in the only one i can't show you is solar um you would have seen the drone footage i've got trees all around me i'm at a caravan park in lovely port broughton here and i i've got like six trees around me so we figured out between two o'clock in the afternoon and three, we might get three of the panels in full sun. But you know, I'm, I'm not gonna bother with that today. It's, it's uh, 
I'll be here or there. Either way, the test I can do for you will be the mains charging, which is taken care of by the factory VM Pro, because this is the HA series, which has the lithium profile inbuilt. It is small, all right? It's only like a 30, 35 amp charger, but these guys aren't interested in fast charging from a generator, all right? They, when they're at a caravan park, they're here for days on end. It's not a quickly let's charge up and fill up with water and go to our next free camp kind of gig for these guys. These guys are a family of two, um, two young kids. So all they want to be able to do is go off grid and replenish from the vehicle as best they can and the solar as best they can. And we've been able to give them that, like I said, 960 on the roof and 50 amps from the vehicle. Um, well, what I might do now is I reckon I'll plug in mains. We'll show you the mains charger and wait for our mate to arrive with his um, cruiser. And then I'll do the cruiser running as well with the mains going. Um, I mean, that's gonna show you 35 plus 50 on. So we should be seeing the 80, 85 from that. I have already discharged the batteries. I've, I've had this AC, um, had the air conditioner running now for a few hours. So um, the batteries are down and in need of replenishment. So that'll be a really good test for those. Um, what else? Oh, side mount hand and some plugs. So I'll make him plug in a portable panel if he wants to add to his roof array, which you probably won't need to, but if you do park in the shade or uh, it's a horribly overcast day and you, you need to replenish it or you want to replenish and get that free energy from the sun, which we all like, well, he can plug in and everything is monitored. And I mean everything. You turn a light on, you run a pump, you run a Sirocco fan, you put that microwave on, you put the range hood on, it doesn't matter. Every little milliamp is monitored on the Victron battery monitor that we fitted in this. This didn't come with one. All it did was come, was come with the RV um, View 2, which is what BM Pro bring out. It's a very basic monitor, basically just shows you in, out, and volts. Because we've put the big inverter on this, and the monstrous solar chargers and the big DC charger, it would exceed the limitations of that by a lot. It'd blow it up. So we reroute everything through a separate shunt, i.e. the Victron BMV 712, and that is gonna tell these guys time remaining, percentage of charge. Uh, it'll log a history of deepest discharge, time and cycles that it's taken to charge the battery, time since last full charge on the battery, um, and it's Bluetooth. It's all accessible on your smartphone or smart device. Very simple, effective. This is a this is a really good off-grid setup, guys. This is this is kind of what you want if you're gonna head off-grid, do the lap, live in it permanently, and you just want that freedom to be able to press a button and you've got mains power on. You know, CPAP machines, whatever you want, popcorn makers, the, the, the list goes on. Uh, TVs, you know, if you're tired of your crappy 12 volt TV, well, hey, go to Harvey Norman or wherever and buy a mains powered smart TV with all the beautiful sound in it. Do it, you can, why not? And they're half the price of these too. The list goes on, charging drills and cordless drills for your pegs when you're free camping and you're not, pen, you know, banging 10 pegs in the ground or whatever. The list goes on, you know, chainsaws, electric chainsaws are becoming more popular. I've personally got one now. So, uh, you know, big Milwaukee batteries need a lot of energy. Well, just swap it out from here charge those batteries and then replenish it from the sun. It's so easy. And if you're driving the next day, you know, these, gonna, these guys are gonna receive 50 from the car every hour, plus the sun. That's ludicrous. So even if you wake up and it says <clears throat> minus 300 ampere hours, well, that's, if we had no sun, that's six hours and it's full again, right? But obviously it's gonna be a sunny day, driving around or they're gonna get something. Even if they're only getting 500, 600 watts from the sun, uh, from the solar on the roof, that's on top of the DC charger. It doesn't cut one off. No, not like some other systems that we all know. Then it, it'll work both at the same time, guaranteed. And the, the numbers don't lie. It's all it's all up on the Victron battery monitor for you guys to see whenever you plug in the Anderson plug. And obviously the, the wiring is done appropriately like we have to handle the big current. So there we have it guys. Enjoy. So I'm gonna get right into plug mains in now and that'll you watch the auto changeover happen here. Watch the flashing light. Because the inverter's still on, guys, all right? When you hit a click, that'll be the transfer switch engaging. And you watch that current fly up because that'll be activating this charger. All right, there's the click. Charger's come on. Take note of the amp, see? So mains charger's kicked in now, guys. That's, that's just 
this is just the the BM Pro that's a 30 amp charger it might be 35 because we're running some light 12 volt stuff so I mean it's doing a, it's doing the job and it's doing doing a great job actually I was, I'm quite surprised so there's 560 amp hours that this is taken care of to charge and we've had this connected for a day now so this did bring the batteries up overnight and when I arrived this morning it, it was in float so it, it does a good job it, it didn't falter at all so very happy with that there's the old original um, display which is no longer in use guys that this is not in use at all all the only thing you could take from it is nothing <laughs> that voltage there is t is red at this point right at these two terminals so if you go by this 13.9 that's at those terminals well where does that wire run it runs through the wall you know three or four whatever meters and then back down to the chassis well, where the batteries used to be obviously we've extended and relocated the wires but and then it goes to here to that main 12 volt fuse so that's why these are always inaccurate you want to know what the exact voltage is you go by this funny that look at the difference this right this number this 13.38 is taken at the battery because there's the shunt see behind the wire there see the shunt down there a little sensing wire that kicks off here right that's the sensing wire it's you know a couple of feet long i know what i'm going to go by <laughs> i want something as close as practical to the battery so that's a good little uh little test to show you guys so if yeah if i were to put my multimeter in here it's going to show you that 14 because this little data cable that's in there takes care of that and no, i'll just have it to show you see there it is. So it, it, it gets its information from this here, and, and that's it. That, that, that's all it knows. So that's, there's no external sort of uh, sensing wire. So we'll just plug that back in, because why not? But I've told our mate to go by this, and that's what he will go by. So to go through it again with you guys, you guys already know what these means with 93.4% state of charge in the 560 amp hours of lithium here. Uh, we've used 36.8 amp hours, because I've run the air conditioner for a couple of hours already. Uh, I've already placed a bit here. Um, we are receiving uh, nearly 320 watts. That's from the mains charger only. It's the only thing going into the batteries as, as we speak. Or 24 odd amps. And then back to voltage. Now, you can go through like history on this. It's just a smaller screen to read. It is much better logging onto this with your phone. It just shows you everything on the one screen. It's quite uniform and easy to read. Um, and as explained before, guys, so hot water service and air conditioning this one is before the inverter this one is after the inverter so this will run no matter what when you plug into mains when you're off the inverter happy days anytime what won't run from the inverter is this one mains charger this hot water service it will not run from the inverter and three-way fridge now I'll show you how that works all right it is it's very easy because all we'll do is we'll, we'll get Riley to pull out the um, side input. I have to yell out to him here. Hey, Riley! Yeah, pull out the side input. All right, now watch. Riley's going to unplug it. All right, see? Transfer. There it is. That's turned off. The hot water service is gone. Well, I can already hear the gas. It's fired up straight away. So take note, the AC light is off. All right, so this, this has sensed, but you know, everything else is on. This has sensed that the 15 amp plug has been removed. We are not on a generator or we are not on mains power anymore and it is shut down. And that's why this is shut down as well. So three items, that's why this will be in discharge now. Yep. So now we're back to free camping. There we have it. So just to recap guys, hot water service, mains charger, three-way fridge are before the inverter. They have zero potential to run from the inverter. Okay. Now. As you can see, things that are on the inverter are the microwave, it's powered up, air conditioner, why not, 16 is the usual spec I think, and all the other outlets, you know, USB charging outside, next to the bed, wherever you want, wherever you wish, anywhere on the side of the road, even the little smelly thing making the van smell awesome. All that stuff will continue to work seamlessly, off the grid anywhere. And the idea of this, obviously before the inverter and the battery charger and the three-way fridge was 
This fridge will pull 375 watts if it ran from the inverter. This Swift hot water service has a 1000 watt element. So if that ran from the inverter, you can see the problem there. This one's a cheat. This this one's a um a hidden one as well as the mains charger. Now we all know we can't we can't run a mains charger from an inverter. You can't create power from nowhere. It's not a, an infinite loop of and spiral down into disappearing ampere hours. <laughs> so the hot water service though, is a tricky one because a lot of people leave this switch on. Now I ask these guys if they do, and they do. So this switch lives in the on position. Why? Because the second they plug in mains power to the side of the van, it just turns on and, and heats the water up. Of course, you got to make sure your pump's on and you know, you're get, getting water in your tank. So that's important. Obviously, this would fire up too, as we know. But the um, other one is, like I said, the fridge. So 375 watts. As soon as you plug in mains power, the fridge will come back on. Hot water service comes on and the battery charger turns on. I'll get Riley to do it and we'll do it live. Hey, Riley, plug it back in. <laughs> I'll actually go over here so you can see it change over. And we wait for the end of drive to pick up that we're on mains power. There we go. All right, it's instantly picked up. Now, what have we got? Wait for the charger to kick in. I reckon that might have been the click, and now we're charging again. See, so. What happened there was, like at the start of the video, Riley has plugged mains power in. It has instantly activated the hot water service element, the 240 volt element. It has activated the mains charger, which is, you can see the charge coming in now. And it has put the fridge back over to AC. There we go, guys. Quick and easy. All right, so get Riley to plug the Sanderson plug in. And then we'll do a Good test because we are running the AC now and we are off grid. So we're running so just inverter and we're off the grid. All right, so there we go. We're on. Red arc is on. What are we going to get? The air conditioner's still running. We've got bugger all solar coming in like nothing. We're still in, we're still in uh, full shade here. Beautiful. There's that 50. Happy as a happy. Gonna give it a bit of a tickle. Give the throttle a bit of a tickle. See what we get out of it. Beautiful. So we're charging, guys. That's just the DC to DC charger. Keeping up with the Harrier. It's actually charging, so. There we go, that's on 16 still. Yep. 16. Air conditioner running, 12 volts all on. And look at those numbers. The numbers do not lie. Happy as hippo. Got no solar coming in at all. Beautiful. Wow, look at that. How's that for a charge rate? What have we got here? Boom, nearly a thousand watts of charge coming in. Happy days.